Hi, this is Dr. Frances Malone, founder of the Intuitive Parents Collective. I've been working with children and their families to provide holistic relationship-based medical care throughout my career. This podcast is for parents interested in consciously raising naturally healthy kids. Here we will dive into topics that span childhood and parenting as well as hosting exciting guests. So whenever you find yourself at the end of your parenting rope, tune into the Intuitive Parents podcast to get support and new ideas about making parenting fun. Thank you for joining us today for the Intuitive Parents podcast. I'm Frances Malone, and I created the Intuitive Parents Collective and this podcast to reach parents everywhere and to share creative ideas, hacks, and to provide support on your parenting journey. Today's guest is Pamela Barton. Hi, Pamela. Welcome. Can you start? Yes. Oh, sorry. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do to support parents? Yes. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm a holistic nutritionist and natural nutrition certified practitioner, and uh, I'm located in, in Canada here in Ottawa. And I offer a variety of services, um, and especially for families, parents, kids. I help them eat healthy. Um, And when I say that, I mean uh, whole food-based foods. uh, And I help families, uh, you know, achieve their goals by feeding the kids a very wholesome, nourishing diet that will help them stay healthy and also educate them on good foods versus not so good foods and so on down the road. That is one of my work. And the other focus is helping actually the parents, helping um, stressed out executives, CEOs, who feel like they can't um, give their A game because they feel tired, they feel exhausted. Um, and they have a lot of responsibility and their role models, and they don't really like the way they're showing up, and they know there's room for improvement. And I help those people in uh, one of my group coaching pro- programs, um, help them get really grip on nutrition, on stress, and on sleep. And we combine all of this together, we bring the puzzle pieces together so that they can feel um, their best and they can have lots of energy and feel vibrant. Great. Thank you so much for being with us, Pamela. I love how you talked about the adults being aware of feeling burnt out, feeling run down, and stressed and exhausted. Because Mm -hmm. I see that in children who are not being fed uh, as robust a whole foods diet as I prefer. I see all families on on a continuum of food and No one is doing anything perfectly because that's not our aim, but we're always trying to up-level the game a little bit so that people could feel better, all the people in the family could feel better, especially the kiddos. So I wanted to ask you, how important is the food that we serve children or that we eat ourselves? Can you talk a little bit about how nutrition is relevant to how we feel? Yes, um, great question. Actually, I believe that nutrition or your nutritional status really determines how you feel and if you become sick uh, if you get a chronic uh, condition anything down the road right i mean kids are usually robust they can handle a lot of um, maybe not so good foods for a while but it also accumulates and and if we are not taking care of this from an early age, we just kind of run into problems further down the road. And we see it as the parents, and that's where the connection is, because once you got to this age where you are the parent, where you're working, and you have really been running on empty calories, on not enough nutrients for a long, long time in your life, or even sometimes short term with a massive amount of stress, um, you're really running on an empty tank. And if you continue this route with your family and your kids, um, it it creates several problems. It creates the problem of they imitate your behavior, right? They they like, they get used to uh, convenience foods because they taste yummy and they don't see the relevance and they don't understand why it's important to feed um, or to eat nutritious foods. And so there are lots of problems that we create if we're not aware of 
uh, how we eat and if we are if we are also not making a priority. Absolutely. I'm wondering if you could just go through for my audience a little bit more detail about what is a whole foods diet when you and you and I, I think are on the same page about that, but I would love for people who have not yet had an opportunity to be in clinical space with me or with you to understand what we really mean by a whole food diet. What does that look like for a parent? Yes. Uh... Great question. So usually what I mean when I talk about whole foods diet is we want to reduce the processed foods as much as possible. So we don't need to be perfect, as you also alluded to earlier. It's not about perfection, but it's really about balance and awareness. And especially when we look at foods that get marketed to kids these days, it's all packaged foods. And then there are school safe snacks, right? That is packaged sugary foods, but then they say, well, it's safe to eat because there are no nuts in it. You can take it to school. So whatever marketing there is around it, they, they, they target kids and tell them, hey, this is healthy, you can eat this. And at the end of the day, we really have to look at how much processed foods are we actually eating on a daily basis. And so whole food is actually the opposite. So if you go shopping, and you browse the, the, the grocery aisle, it's the, you find the whole foods on the outside. You find it in the vegetable aisle, you find it in the, where the fruits are. It's all of the things that nature has provided in its uh, original form that we have not taken and altered or you know, uh, constructed in a different or fabricated into a different types of product. So that is what we mean by whole foods. So we want to make sure we eat as natural as possible whenever we can. And again, not to overwhelm anyone, it's not about perfection, but it's really um, trying to get the main meals uh, of the day as natural as possible and not a lot of processed foods, uh, sugary foods and uh, sugary drinks and all of the things that we call convenient foods. That is the opposite of whole foods. Great. And so could you elaborate on what does a whole foods breakfast look like? Because if someone is thinking that serving a uh, waffle that came out of a package or um, cereal, those in my mind are not whole foods because they have been processed um, pretty robustly. And uh, I think that we got to start, let's get ourselves on a, like a, ground where parents can understand what we mean by what is a whole food breakfast look like? Yes. Yeah, great. So yeah, a waffle that comes out of a package or a cereal is definitely not whole foods. It's been processed. It's been altered. It looks completely different than what nature grew. So um, I guess I always start out by asking you, okay, how would you like to eat breakfast? Because there are some people who say, you know, I prefer a warm breakfast. Others say, no, it has to be uh, quick. I don't want to spend any time on it. So that's always the first thing we need to, to figure out. Um, how do we actually want to eat? And then there are always better options. So if you say, I need my waffle, like in the morning, that's what I want to eat. Then I would tell you, or I would give you a recipe how you can make a waffle yourself with, um, of course, there will be maybe some flour in it, which is technically processed. Right, but again, we want to. We don't want to get caught up on this perfection piece. There are better alternatives. There are better flours you can buy. I would give you recipes that uses healthy fats, um, minimally uh, processed sugars, or or even just a banana. You know, there are lots of things we can do to make this waffle uh, a much healthier version and more nutrient rich than a uh, thing that comes out of the package. So that is always something where I say we can up-level this, right? If it has to be the waffle, we find a really good recipe that will give you nutrients and that will also make you feel full longer so you don't have to eat as fast again. It's often something that I find that kids get up off the breakfast table and then they eat again uh, half an hour later because they're hungry. So this is really um, something that I like to uh, draw attention to 
and also, for example, cereal, um, then I prefer oatmeal and you can make it yourself. You also don't have to buy the packaged oatmeal. You can just buy steel cut oats and, and they don't really take a long time if you put them in a pot with a little bit of hot water um, and you, you cook them for a few minutes. It's it's hearty and it's nourishing and the kids will stay full longer and it, and it will be less sugar because you control what you put in it as a, as a topping or an additive. Right. Well, those are great suggestions. One of my favorite parenting hacks that I did not know early on is that you can make wa your own waffles. First of all, you can make your own waffle mix so that it's easy and convenient to pull out of the refrigerator but then you can yes. also make them ahead of time and freeze them so you can toast Absolutely. them just like the lego ego or whatever the ego package mm -hmm. thing is yes you can do that yourself or your child can then toast it for themselves in the morning i Absolutely. definitely like children to be having a uh, protein or fat, high fat content food along with any of these carbohydrates that they're receiving in the morning because I want them to have this beautiful long burning energy so that they are not hungry in a half an hour because they haven't just spiked their uh, insulin and they had to drop their blood sugar and they haven't just gotten this big rush and then a drop. And it helps with our behavior management. It helps with rolling through our day, getting out the door, getting to school and being attentive there. If we have some protein or some fat heavy breakfast that helps that carbohydrate move through in a more uh, tempered manner. Yes, absolutely. I'm there with you. I, I also prefer protein and, and healthy fats first thing in the morning and, and some fiber. And luckily we have lots of ways to achieve this this day, but it's not the mainstream breakfast that people grow accustomed to, right? Because it's not contained in a cereal box and it's not contained necessarily in a waffle, although you can put protein in the waffle. Um, but um, yeah, so we do want to maybe slightly change the way we think about uh, breakfast and um, teach better and more consistent ways to feed our kids. Because also if we don't have to buy uh, 1 million snacks, because our kids are not that hungry, it also saves us money down the road. And me as a parent, I noticed uh, quite the difference when um, I had to shop for a kid that stayed with us for a while because they, they wanted to have four different snack bars and five different bags of uh, Doritos and chips because they said they're getting so hungry all day. And I was like, what's going on? I mean, why do you have to snack all day? And the reason why you have to snack all day is because you're, you're not full after your meals. You're not getting the nutrients. And, uh, and yeah, and you also alluded to the behavioral issues. Um, and buying all these foods on a regular basis will, will get quite costly. And it's not necessary if we really pay attention to, to the meal aspect. Right. And I bet that you also find with adults that you have to help them relearn to eat a high protein or high fat breakfast so that they can feel better at work. And this is one of the things that I want children to feel better while they're at school. This is their primary job in life because we've given it to them is to go to school and to be functional. And if we are trying to subsist on a muffin in the morning or cereal or only a waffle, then we set ourselves up for a crash an hour after we've just had our breakfast. Yes, absolutely. It always starts with the parents because the kids really, they're looking, they're looking up to us and they're imitating us. And um, what we eat, they want to eat. Most, most kids are curious. They want to at least try. So mommy, what are you eating? You know, like, what is it? And, and so if we are a good role model and we set, um, you know, good mealtime routine, um, then the kids are more likely to be successful with with solid and, and good nutrition. And in my house, for example, that's one thing that's really important to me. Like we take the meals together in the morning and in the evening. And at lunch we can't because we're not together. But so the morning we're all having breakfast together. And even if it has to be a little earlier, uh, then, then you would maybe get up to make this happen. It's really worth it because Getting a good source of breakfast in will already eliminate uh, some of the uh, sugary snacks that the kids will have in school later on. 
And then again, dinner time is also something I'm very protective of. Um, we eat together, we're all sitting down together. This is the time without phones, without TV. Um, we're having a conversation and we eat real foods. And I think this is something, a habit and a lifestyle that can be implemented in everybody's life. You can always find ways to make, make that happen. Yes, one of the favorite things that I like to do, especially if I'm transitioning a child from being quote unquote a picky eater to trying to expand the foods that they will try is to create, help the parent to create meals that allow a little flexibility in them. For example, um, presenting to the children a, um, a rice bowl where they can add to it a variety of different toppings. So they can basically make their own bowl of food based on a variety of different things that are in bowls around to, you know, sort of create their own dinner or um, to create their own dessert with yogurt. And then there's this berry or this topping or these cinnamon sprinkles or, uh, and that way I'm inviting a child to experiment and to try and then add toppings and see how they like it. And I see that I get children's a little bit better buy-in when I'm transitioning away from a, a processed food diet to something that's a little bit more whole foods based. Yes, I love that. And, and that's actually also how we do it. I have a picky eater myself. Um, and uh, what we always do is we let them choose their own, what I call toppings. And the toppings are often vegetables. Um, and I always say, well, choose two toppings. And uh, so then they have, they can choose what they want to try out. And yes, a rice bowl, um, like a Buddha bowl concept, it's, it's, uh, that's super convenient. And it also gives the, the kids the freedom of choice, but you give them healthy choices and then they can choose uh, which one they want to try. And I love that because it empowers them. And you also expose them to a variety of different foods. Uh, which will which will be fun for them to discover new things once they get into the habit, once they get over this initial hump of, oh, I don't like all of this. Um, you can make it really fun for them to try. It's like a discovery uh, plate, if you will. Right. And every time you can make it different or add some uh, homemade dressing or a little bit not quite so processed or even add the processed dressing. I don't care to smother out the flavors of the things that you don't like, just to make it something that you've created yourself. Yes, absolutely. And, and we have like in our house, we have a rule that um, you need to have vegetables for dinner, but I leave up uh, the, the quantity up to them. So if they say they only want one carrot and that's fine. Um, but they do have to have um, one vegetable at least, and then they can choose. And that works fairly well. There's no resistance. And then what actually happens over the course of the evening is that they're actually sneaking in more carrots because they forgot because they were talking or like telling us something. And then they grab another and another. And so the end of the dinner, they have actually eaten more than they, they thought they would. So that works very well. And um, we make these little uh, fun rules and games around it. Right. I'd like to talk for a moment just about your favorite packable snacks for the lunchbox. I know that not everybody packs a lunch for their children, but when we have the opportunity to be able to pack it, I like to suggest to parents that they can prepare the two or three days worth of packable snacks in the refrigerator so that in the morning, it's not a big deal to grab a few of those bags of carrots and other things and throw them in a lunchbox. What kind of ideas do you have, Pamela, about things that parents can pack. Yeah, that is actually a great idea. I prefer that too, especially when there is no time in the morning. You have everything sort of like your concept is ready to go. And all you need to do is kind of pack it and put it in a lunchbox, which only takes a few minutes. So it's not a big deal. So I always say, okay, think about it on the weekend or whenever you have time for the upcoming week that you have everything you want or need. And, and just sort of make a, make a plan for you. How, how do you want to divide it? Like, do you have a snack in the morning, a lunch, 
um, and then an afternoon snack. How is it in your school? How many different types of uh, meals do you need to bring? And then what you do is um, you can, so for example, I always like to include fruit um, in, in one of the snacks. So I just make a list of, of my kids' favorite foods and then I decide on one or two and I would make sure I have those ready. And for example, one of my daughter only eats apples. And so um, I try and, and vary the apple how I, you know, sometimes they get apple slices, some other times I will make some apple sauce so they will get it in a different form and they think that they will have a different type of lunch every day. So that, for example, is, is a great way to get the food in. You can also hide fruits if you make little uh, grab and go muffins, you can put fruit in there, banana works very well, but also applesauce um, or pears, you know, depending on what season we're in, you can use seasonal foods. Um, you can put vegetables in those as well. Um, if they don't like the color green, you don't need to put um, spinach, but spinach works very well. You can also make little egg muffins if they like that, and that would give you the protein. So you have an egg muffin that you put in the same tins like a regular muffin, and you can put some veggies in there as well. You can chop them very small if, if they don't like the texture. You can hide it in there and make little egg muffins. So when you make like 12 or so all in one sitting, and you have basically the week covered, and that can be part of lunch. And then, as you said, these little bags of carrots, that is super, uh, a super quick way and fun way. They, kids often like a fingers, finger food as well. And then you can pack a little bit of dressing or a dip, like a hummus dip or a ranch dressing or whatever they like, where they can dip it in, um, you know, as, as the vegetable component. And you can give them different vegetables. You can cut up some peppers, some cucumbers. You know, can, you can just um, uh, change that up. And you can plan all of this out ahead of time so that it's really just grab and go. And, um, and, and yeah, so uh, muffins is a quick way. You can also have some, if you, if you prefer to give them a sandwich, have just the, the bread ready and, and make it the, the evening before and put some a cheese or some uh, ham or something on there so they get a little bit more substance. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and then you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, sugary cookies or so for the third snack because most of the time they're actually full. And then you give bananas and you give little cherry tomatoes, you know, um, that they can grab and, and eat quickly with their fingers. And, and uh, usually, I find that's already enough because it's whole foods, it's dense and it makes the kids feel full longer and then they last till, till they come home. Great. One of my favorite, I just want to mention this because lots of times when I suggest it, people have never thought about it. One of my favorite vehicles for peanut butter or any nut butter mm -hmm. is carrot. And yes. I love carrots dipped in peanut butter and it's actually a very filling lunch for me. Mm -hmm. The other parent hack that I like to do is if I have a roast chicken or some chicken or steak or something that I make one evening, chopping up chicken or steak and putting it in a little box or a Tupperware container or a bag is a beautiful presentation for a child who is hungry at school. Sometimes we think, oh, we have to make a muffin. Well, they don't need a muffin if they also had carrots and they had a little bag of steak and they had the you know, peanut butter to dip in, then we're really filling up a person with nutritious foods and not having to lean so heavily on a snack, but it's in a cute little container. It feels like I'm snacking on something, but my body also feels really good after I've eaten it. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I love it. So if your kid uh, will eat that, eat some cut up chicken or some steak, definitely go for it. It's so filling and then they don't need to eat a whole lot because they will, they will be full. So that's, that's a great suggestion and it's easy to do. As you say, on the weekend, you can roast a chicken or you can have a, a roast and, and, and cut it in little pieces and portion it. That's a great way to feed your kids as well. And then what, uh, one other thing I wanted to just touch on for a second is smoothies. Because parents have gotten better and better at making smoothies, what are some of your favorite things to put into smoothies? so that your smoothie can pack a punch. I think a smoothie for breakfast is a great way to send children out the door. 
because we can hit all the marks of protein, fat, and other uh, fruit and vegetable requirements. But why don't you tell me a few of your favorite things to put into a smoothie for child? Yes, I, I love smoothies too. Uh, for me and my family, especially on those days where, where time is really running out on us. Um, so I definitely, I have some protein powders and um, there are different ways, uh, different protein powders and different philosophies around them. Um, that's, that would be a whole other discussion, but I'm using a, a protein powder and then um, I, I, choose, uh, I choose a fruit, I choose a vegetable that I have and um, I, I choose a fat. So if we look at those components that I wanna see in it, um, so for example, this morning I had some frozen berries as my vegetables and I had, and that's another way, a really great way to use up vegetables that maybe are kind of getting, getting there to be spoiled. So before you throw them out, you can still use them in smoothies. Um, so I had a few berries and I had a piece of cucumber left and um, a few carrots and I put them all in and I put my protein powder in. And then I put some um, avocado oil in it to make it a little smoother. And I'll, also I love nut milks. So if you, if you like nut milks, uh, you can use those as well. Um, I, I used a walnut milk actually this morning that I really like, gives, gives the creamy taste. And then you blend all of this up, uh, you know, like really, really well that it mixes and it tastes fantastic. It, it has very wholesome body, a, a great flavor, and it, it really makes you full. And my kids love that too. They often drink a smoothie and uh, then they say, mom, I didn't even snack. It was fine. I last all the way to lunch because I felt so full. Right. My children love smoothies too. And sometimes the smoothie would end up being like this really crazy black color or green. <laughs> yeah. And we would just call them monster smoothies. And yeah. I would allow them to put in a lot of the ingredients, right? So we mm -hmm. could open up the fridge or the freezer together and choose what are the things that we should throw in our smoothie today. And then of course, when I have it over on the counter, I'm adding in a little extra kale or mm -hmm. I'm throwing in some of the other components that they didn't necessarily pick, but they wanted a dragon fruit smoothie. So I added other things to that wouldn't show up in the smoothie color. Yes. Cause it gets this beautiful yes. pink. And uh, that way I am still in control of what's the ingredients that are in the smoothie, but the kids are also helping to make it. And then it, they just are bought into drinking the thing and uh, enjoying it. Yes, that's a great suggestion. I love that. And it also, it's fun for the kids too, if they feel in control uh, to decide what gets in it. And it's the same here at our house. The smoothies look different every single day, <laughs> depending on what we have, but that's the fun of it. I, I don't really like to drink the same smoothie every single day. It, it gets boring after a while. So actually the fun I find in smoothies is if you change it up every day because you never know what you get at the end. It can be fun. Right. So one last thing that I wanted us to touch on because getting our children to sleep is uh, the last probably of every day priority for parents. but there's often a way that we can lead up to bedtime with food. And um, I'd love to hear what some of your suggestions for, uh, I know that you work with adults on preparing themselves for sleep and what kinds of things can we use at our dinner table or as pre-bed snacks to help prepare our children for a restful night's sleep? Yeah, that's, uh, that's super important. And I, I really think it comes down to, um, first of all, the way you eat all day long. And it started out with this yummy breakfast with protein and fats and fiber, um, because that really sets the tone for the rest of the day. And believe it or not, it also sets the tone of how you sleep. So even though there's a long time between breakfast and dinner, it actually helps you, you know, give the right signals for getting tired and falling asleep because it's all connected. And so we want to make sure that we eat as balanced as possible during the day. And that means uh, protein, fat, and fiber or carbohydrates in a balanced way. And if we eat a dinner according to that principle as well, 
we're really helping the body um, to just stay calm and not be agitated because we don't want a kid to, we don't want kids to be agitated and getting a second wind or an, and being too excited because then they can't calm down and then they can't fall asleep so getting a little bit uh, mindful of sugary snacks processed snacks um, chips uh, I don't know, a very sugary desserts after dinner is probably a good idea because some kids do really get hyper and they get more energy when they eat a lot of sugar. And we don't want that around bedtime. We want to make sure they can really relax and calm. And, and you can only achieve that if the body gets balanced nutrition. And so we, we, do, we do want to avoid, um, you know, sugary processed or even bag chips uh, type of foods uh, just before bedtime. Absolutely. So what are your favorite evening snacks? I'll tell you two of mine. Sometimes if dinner wasn't as big a hit as I uh, wanted it to be or hoped it would be because my kiddos were pretty darn active, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we have and present to the kiddos, oh, look, let's have a, another snack before bed and they would have a bowl of yogurt and be able to pick whatever berries they wanted to put on top of it. And I'd also serve a sausage that I knew that they loved so that I am providing them with some really dense uh, fat and protein food before they go to bed. Yes. Lots of people, it never occurred to them to prevent, oh my gosh, you could cook a sausage because the quinoa uh, Buddha bowls didn't go over so well at dinner or we just had, they were busy and they were animated and they didn't do a lot of actual eating. We did a lot of talking at dinner. And so I want to be sure that I'm adding some extra food later in the evening. So I don't have kids waking up hungry or um, unable to fall asleep because their stomach is still not quite full. Um, so parents always look at me like what a sausage for dessert. I'm like, yes, I'll serve anything to balance out the day so that my kiddos can feel full and ready for sleep. Yeah, no, so true. Um, uh, it's, it's the same in our house. We like to eat some, my kids are really big on finger food, like anything that they can just grab. So I often put a, a bowl of um, um, mixed nuts on the table, right? So they can have some almonds or some walnuts and so they can grab that because that contains protein and fats and it makes you f feel full. So my kids love to just snack on some nuts uh, at, in the evening. And uh, sometimes we would whip up some eggs. So they either have some scrambled eggs or they have um, uh, soft boiled eggs. My daughter loves to uh, eat soft boiled eggs. So that is also another way of, uh, you know, making them feel full longer. And actually, um, I find they get pretty tired after this, like on their regular bedtime, they're, they're, they're ready for bed because they, they have been eating well and they, they are ready to sleep. So that helps. Yes, and I also will sometimes su suggest that a parent add some passion flower tea at dinner time because mm -hmm. the passion yes. flower tea served with dinner helps us just to wind down and um, sort of settle into the idea of our bodies being relaxed and calm in a couple hours when we're ready for bed. Yeah, that's a nice idea, passion flower. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, we sometimes do lavender, but I love passion flower. So we try that out next. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, Pamela, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us these tips and ideas for parents. I would love you to just remind the parents what your website is and the name of your business so that they can reach out should they decide that they want your support in a different manner. Yes, yeah, I'd be happy to. So you find more information about what I do on my website and that is um, butterflyholisticnutrition.ca. So it's one long, long word, butterfly the animal, holistic with H, and then nutrition.ca. And there you will find um, my offer, for example, for meal planning, because I help families with the meal planning so that they can tr transition to a whole food based diet. And I give them all the support they need to make this happen. They have all the recipes, grocery lists, and also the rationale behind the meals and how to change it up if there are foods in there 
that they absolutely don't like. So this is really a very practical, comprehensive way of transitioning to more to a whole foods based diet that also does not take a whole lot of time. So no worries, you don't have to spend your entire day in the kitchen to cook. So there's more information on there. If you are a busy parent, if you are a busy person who likes to have support for yourself uh, because you want to have more energy and you want to feel better, you can also watch my free webinar on the blueprint that I'm using to, to help people with that. And that is www.metabolicenergysolutions.com. Um, that is a, a free a screening that you can, you can watch and, and, and uh, get the idea of how I'm helping you with nutrition, with stress and with sleep so that you can show up better and be a great role model for your kid. Great. Well, thank you so much, Pamela, for being with us today and sharing your ideas. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Hi, this is Frances. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Intuitive Parents Podcast. We are thrilled to have you here and hope that you enjoyed it. Please share our podcast with others who may benefit and leave us a review. To receive a free gift of the 14-day challenge, bringing peace to your household, go to mygiftfromfrancis.com. That's mygiftfromfrancis.com. Take care. I look forward to working with you.